Hello, I'm Johnny from Classic Retrofit. This is our first product walkthrough video, which is about our 911 fuse panel. These can be fitted to cars from 1969 till 1989. So that's all the classic air-cooled models. Uh, we have over a thousand of these uh, that we've shipped. Uh, they're in use all over the world. Uh, they're also fitted to race and rally cars, so they're well proven by now. It's possibly the, one of the best upgrades you can do on your car for improved reliability and general day-to-day -day use. So let me show you what the cars had when they were new and some of the issues uh, with the original system and take you through the improvements that this panel can offer you. So here's the fuse box in my SC and when it was built it contained these fuse blocks, three separate ones, each with these bullet fuses. The reason there are three separate blocks is simply due to Porsche's uh, philosophy of evolving. So in the early cars, the very early cars in the 60s, I think they just had a single fuse block. And then when he moved into the late 60s, early 70s, they added another one. And then when they got to the impact bumper cars, a third one. And this led to, um, I guess, cost savings but also the need to have these little bridges to join certain terminals together. Okay. On the back of these panels, they are, or well, certain terminals are bussed together. So you can see those two are connected together. There's two there or three, and then, so you can see that it's not simply a case that fuses go straight through some are joined and typically the join is at the at the top of the circuit with the bottom feeding individual circuits lights wipers etc so our fuse panel integrates all of the three blocks together the uh, internal um, bussing is done on the board so there's no need there's no need for these links anymore so you, you don't need to fit those it's handled here, but you can see where the, the stripes are between the terminals. This indicates that it's connected together. You can see it's effectively a duplication of, of what went on, on on the original panel. Okay, so let's take a look at the original fusing system. So this was based on bullet, what they call continental or bullet style fuses. Uh, these originally were made of ceramic. These days they tend to be made of plastic. Uh, one of the issues with them is that they use spring tension to hold the fuse in place. So these holders you can see are, um, are sprung and there's quite a small contact area to make the electrical connection between the holder and the end of the bullet fuse. Uh, what this leads to is um, an increased resistance in the, in the fuse and or in the contact and if you've got an increased resistance then effectively you end up producing heat now if you produce heat in a ceramic fuse um, yeah, ceramic will take care of it but when these are made of plastic it can actually melt the fuse even with um, a proper ceramic fuse in place I've seen situations where the actual uh, backing here of the fuse holder is actually melted um, this typically happens on the fuel pump circuit, um, particularly on the turbo car, uh, that you can get a situation where you're pulling so much current and there's too much resistance and it heats up enough to, to melt the holder. With, this blade, with the blade fuses, you don't generally get that because the contact area of the fuse is much bigger. So you've got all of that sort of um, flat area there to, uh, to contact with with the actual fuse holder so these are much more sturdy and they don't don't generally heat at all so you can see under under each terminal and between the fuse and the terminal there's a an led hidden in there now these are really useful for um, detecting whether your your fuse is blown but also for diagnosing wiring faults in the car so just to give you a short demonstration you can see that the um the hood lights on here so if we uh, pop 
all the hood views to simulate it blowing. You can see that the LED comes on to indicate that. But it's also also worth knowing that um, if you're doing a restoration on a car and you've just put the wiring loom in, if you take all the fuses out, then these lights can be really useful for diagnosing all the switch gear in the car because they will only light when the circuit is powered. So you can see, um, for example, if you were down here working on the lighting circuit, you could actually trigger the switches in the car and you'd see the LEDs come on, provided you take the fuses out. So that's quite a neat little feature. So one of the most maligned systems in the 911 is the headlamps. And I actually run yellow headlamps and I'm perfectly happy with them. Um, the, the, the issue here is that they never fitted any headlamp relays, so all of the current for the bulb goes back to the stalk in the car and then runs back to the headlamps. Over time the, the stalk contacts wear out and the light output diminishes and it's that contact resistance again. It just ends up in a vicious circle and eventually the, the switch will fail, the stalk switch will fail. Um, and they're not cheap either. I mean, uh, they're a couple of hundred dollars, I think, in, in the States, and certainly uh, 180 pounds over here, something like that. Um, but these relays will, will effectively solve all of that. Um, the main current for the bulbs goes through the relay. Uh, the wiring's unchanged because this uh, fuse board is effectively, you know, has the, has the wiring internally for the relay. So you don't have to wire these up separately. It's just, just a matter of putting these wires in and you know it will be taken care of for you. We've actually had uh, a, a lighting technician measure the um, increased uh, output from the headlamps with these with these fitted and uh, it's about 20% which is uh, you know definitely noticeable. Now when you install one of these panels it is worth noting that this screw that's in here is the grounding point for these relays and often we'll get a call saying that the relays are not behaving or they keep switching on and on it's all to do with this screw so you must make sure that this screw is properly tightened against the metal panel and secondly that the metal panel is actually grounded to the uh, to the battery uh, negative so if you have a meter, you can check this by checking the resistance from this point here down to the battery negative, and that will be um, as close to zero ohms as possible, i.e. a direct connection. If it isn't, it's possible to, to ground this panel separately, and you can do that um, over here. So if you run this to a ground point, you can see I've got a few grounds on here, and, and there's a handy one just there. So if you loop that to there, you can, you can fix any problems with this this metal plate isn't grounded. To be honest, it's usually cars that have been re restored and they have particularly heavy paint behind the panel, and that can lead to this, this uh, bracket not being grounded properly. So our panel is actually um, a heavy duty um, circuit board, and on the back it's, uh, it's flow soldered, so all of these are very high reliability um, flow soldered joints. Um, but that does mean we need to isolate the back of this panel from the metal panel here. So the fuse panels come with a gasket, um, which basically fits, direct fits over the screw. And these, these spaces, really important to put these spaces in, um, because it stops the uh, gasket being over squashed when you, when you install the screws. So. Now, some people have said that these panels can take a while to install. Well, to be honest, it's it's more to do with the state of the original wiring. Um, often you find that some of these wires are quite short, which can make um, the uh, installation pro process a, a little bit more tricky. But you can get down in here and sort of tug the wiring along. There's, um, you can see it's all clipped in under here. So it is possible to pull that through a bit um, to, to help you... Uh, feed the wires through but if the car's got a good wiring system I mean you can usually get this job done you know within a couple of hours but you know don't rush it's a, it's a good weekend job and we've got lots of time on our hands now so so there we have it that's an upgrade to um, the fusing system 
there's over a thousand of these in 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 use at the moment and um, they're pretty much a no-brainer if you've got one of these cars even if you think your electrics are working properly i think you'll find that things that you thought were a bit slow for example electric windows and sunroofs you'll suddenly find that you know everything seems to be a bit more lively and, and perk up as well as the impact bumper fuse panel, we also have panels for the early cars. This is 69 to 73 and the small rear fuse panel, which fits all cars from 69 to 89. The early car panel comes with a more rigid backing plate and the Perspex cover, which clips onto the ends of the panel and it's in place. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video product walkthrough for the 911 fuse panel. Uh, we have plenty of these in stock. We ship by air, so you can get your hands on one of these in a couple of days. There's a detailed installation manual uh, for this and all our other products on our website. Just go to classicretrofit.com. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you get updates on what we're doing on this car and generally in the company. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.